I would like to apologize for my previous review. Not because of the opinions I shared in it, because I still agree with what I said, but because I ended up getting a few bits of information wrong, I would like to take some time to address this. First things first, Wayne Coyne did not do lead vocals on every song on Oh My God. Uh, the drummer, Richard English, actually provided vocals for some tracks. I don't remember exactly which ones, but I do remember that Can't Exist is one of them. How I didn't pick up on that, I don't know, and I have no excuse. Secondly, the name of the album I'll be focusing on in this review is Telepathic Surgery, not Telegraphic Surgery surgery. I don't even know how a telegraphic surgery would work. I'd imagine it not being very effective. No, the name of the album I'll be focusing on today is telepathic surgery, which I still don't understand how it would work in a medical field, but it seems a lot more effective than a telegraphic surgery. Third, near the end of my previous video, I mentioned that things got better. And while that is certainly true, not immediately so. In fact, Still took them a little while for them to really get into the groove of things. It was released a few years after Oh My God in 1989. And you'd think with the years of studio experience behind them, the access that they have with these different kind of sounds and technologies and ideas, they'd be able to, like, like, like the last album was a fluke, they'd be able to bounce back from that. They've managed to make great songs that appeared on their first two albums and, you know, Everything would be all right in the end. Not exactly the case with telepathic surgery. This is really where the band starts experimenting with sonic elements, not just with how they play and their style. Panning and a lot of phasing and a lot of fader and a lot of different studio trickery that they wouldn't normally have been able to accomplish. And it really shows, especially in you know the intro to Right Now, and Miracle on 42nd Street, and not only sonically, but with songwriting as well, with UFO Story, which is a six minute long track of Wayne Coyne detailing his first memory and his first experiences with extraterrestrial life, which leads into a minute or so of noise from just all areas and just bombards you and it shakes down to the core. But aside from that, it, it still seems like the band was messing around in the studio with no real reason or goal set in mind. Several tracks, while they are tight in their performance, they just feel lazy and meandering and just seem like the band fucked about for an hour and then worked with what they had. Like with Drug Machine in Heaven, the album's opener. It's loud and abrasive with this crazy noisy guitar solo, but it doesn't really do anything beyond that. In fact, the only interesting thing about this song I could write in my notes while listening to this album was that I thought my MP3 file of the song was glitched because of that guitar solo. I I mean, there are times when that carefree energy does give us something interesting, like with Harry Krishna's Stomp Wagon, with its neat guitar hook that chimes out every single chance it gets. But then there are times when you get full-on filler, like with Michael, Time to Wake Up, which is a thing. A thing Wayne admitted to only having recorded because Michael was asleep with his head close to a guitar amplifier. Then there are empty tracks like the spontaneous combustion of John and the album closer Begs and Aiken, which I didn't even write notes on because there's not much that I can say about it. And that's the problem with the band's earlier material. I can't really find much to talk about. Like, if you asked me to tell you what I thought about, oh, Ego Trippin' at the Gates of Hell, I could go on for hours about the different subtle nuances and all the tiny little details that I absolutely adore about this song. You ask me to cover the band's first three albums, I struggle to find anything to talk about. I have to scramble to find maybe three or four things to say about each track, and it basically boils down to, eh, it's okay, or ooh, I like this sound, or oh, it's energetic. That's why I don't actually show you my notes, because I maybe two or three things to say about each song at most. <sighs> I mean, is there anything on this album that's redeemable? Is there a reason for me to even be doing this? Uh, yeah, the band's doing something interesting with the panning and the stories and shit, but there's, is there anything on this album that's actually worth listening to? Actually, there is. Complaints is that? Written after one of Wayne's friends showed him the chords to Sweet Child of Mine, this is one of the band's earliest forays into some material that you'd find later on in their discography, especially in their mid, early mid era. 
like Cloud's taste metallic and transmissions. It's a slow burner with a ton of noise, but it has this wonderful clean guitar that shines its way throughout the entire thing. And the bass is at the perfect levels to help complement and bring together the whole track. And the vocals are sung with just enough sweetness to make this tea all the more sweeter. And the lyrics are straighter than the usual coin fare, but they're just weird enough so that you know that you're listening to a coin creation. And basically everything about this song is what I wish this whole album was and what it should have been. And really there's no wonder why this is the one song that later fans tend to gravitate towards when they listen to the band's earlier material. Also, I just want to point out that little fake out fade out near the end has no bearing on my love of the song whatsoever, but it's still an interesting addition nevertheless. Another song I enjoy is Miracle on 42nd Street. It's the most simplest track on the album with just guitars, bass, and vocals. There are no drums, but there is a little bit of a piano thing that comes in near the end of the track to help complement the song. It's not overbearing. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It helps bring the song together. The vocals are kind of distant and panned off to the right, and they're almost unnoticeable at first. For some reason, this effect, if it was in any other song, I'd probably have an issue with it, but for some reason, it works right here, and I think it's because the sonic elements work together with the, with the different frequency. I don't fucking know. It works together. It's a beautiful track. It's just a shame that more wasn't done with it. Otherwise, I'd rank it a lot higher on my list. Oh, yeah. The listing. In the mist here, we've got Michael, Time to Wake Up, and the Spontaneous Combustion of John. Okay. <laughs> In the okay tier, we've got Drug Machine in Heaven, Last Drop of Morning Dew, Right Now, and Begs and Aiken. Hooray. In the great tier, we've got Shaved Gorilla, followed by Redneck School of Technology, followed by Harry Krishna Stomp Wagon, Buck Led Zeppelin, UFO Story, and then Miracle on 42nd Street. I'm and in the absolute, all we have is chrome-plated suicide. But overall, I've got to give this album 1.5 out of 5. And if it weren't for chrome-plated suicide, it'd barely have gotten that. The band seems to be regressing at this point, And I don't understand why when they have at least 4 to 5 years of studio experience under their belt at this point. While I do appreciate the efforts and experimentation, most of the time it only serves as a vehicle to either annoy the shit out of me or bore the shit out of me. It just makes me sad that out of the band's earliest materials so far, I can only recommend the first album. I'm just so glad that we have Chrome Plated Suicide and Miracle on 42nd Street. To, like, If there's anything from this album I recommend you listen to, it's those two songs. Maybe UFO Story, if you're curious. That's, that's it. That's the whole thing about this album. It's a curiosity. Nothing more than that. A morbid curiosity at that. So those are my thoughts on the band's third album, Telepathic Surgery. Let me know in the comments what you think about the album, what you think about the hat and the new background. It's probably going to be a one-time thing, this background, but you never know how things progress. And with that said, I will see you all when I review the band's next album in a priest-driven ambulance with Silver Sunshine Stairs. I believe that's the subtitle. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, there are two tracks on this album I did not review called Fry Enough and Hell's Angels Cracker Factory. I didn't review those because those weren't on the original pressings of the album. They were only introduced later on. And one of them's a 20-minute noise collage, which, love you, Flaming Lips. I'm not going to sit through that. The only thing notable I can say about Hell's Angels Cracker Factory is that it really paved the way for the band's later, longer work. Like, I found a star on the ground, which is six hours long, and Seven Skies H3, which is 24 hours long. So, with that said, see you all the next video. Sorry for the wait and getting this one out. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day, and don't be a stranger. Now to take five hours editing this shit.